3.5 part A, graphing rational functions. We're going to start with this very first example here. Here's our rational function. The first thing we have to do is find all vertical asymptotes. The way we find the vertical asymptotes is we set the denominator equal to zero. So if I do that, I get two answers. I get x equals negative two, which is one vertical asymptote, and x is equal to negative four is my other asymptote. So let's go ahead and plot that real quick here. This is the vertical asymptote, x is equal to negative 4. And this is the other vertical asymptote, x is equal to negative 2. OK, let's go to the next step. The next step is to find the horizontal asymptotes. The horizontal asymptotes are found by looking at the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator. OK. Okay, if I were to actually multiply out the denominator, this is what it should look like then. I get x squared plus 6x plus 8. Whenever the degree of the denominator is lower than the degree of the numerator, let me just explain that more, the denominator has degree 2 and the numerator has degree 1. The degree, again, is the highest exponent of the variable. So this is degree 1, this is degree 2. Whenever the numerator has a lower degree than the denominator, you automatically have the horizontal asymptote y is equal to 0, which is right here. OK, so that takes care of steps 1 and 2. Let's go to step 3. Step 3, find zeros of the polynomial function. The way we find zeros is we set the numerator equal to 0. And if we go ahead and solve that, we get the value of negative 1 half. So negative 1 half 0 is an x-intercept. That's right there on the graph. OK. Now the next thing we want to do is find the y-intercept. The way we find the y-intercept is find f of 0, which is right here. We plug in 0 for our function, and we get 1 eighth. So the y-intercept is 0, 1 eighth, which is right here. OK. And then you want to find some other points. That's step 5. Find some other points to get the rough die idea for the graph. What I do is I actually use my calculator to do this. So I'm going to pull it up real quick here. OK. Go ahead and put in your function. When you put in your function, um, if you notice the denominator has two different parts, you want to put parentheses around the whole thing as well as each part. So if you look here, what I have in my calculator, I have parentheses around 2x plus 1. I have parentheses around the whole denominator and the parentheses for each part separately. OK. Now, one way we can actually get values for our table, for our, I'm sorry, for our graph, is we're going to go and we're going to actually pick values for x and plug them in for y. And the way we do that is we hit second, table set. And under independent variable, you want it to say ask instead of auto. So go to ask. And now to go to our table, which is an xy table, we go to second table. And then you could basically pick values for x and plug them in for y. For example here, if I pick negative 7, it automatically gives me a value for y, which is great, instead of doing it by hand. Negative 6, and so forth. OK, so you can keep doing that for all the values. Once you get to the bottom of the screen, you have to actually go back over the numbers. You can only list so many numbers here. OK, so that may be something that may be a little bit helpful for you. OK, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause the video, plot the points, and then finally finish the graph so you get an idea. So you might want to do the same. OK, what I did was I went ahead and plotted some of these points on my graph here. And then finally, you want to just go ahead and connect them together. When you pick your x values on this table, you want to always pick values close to your vertical asymptotes. So if you kind of look here, I pick values close to negative 4, a lot of them and also values close to negative 2. OK, so this is finally the rough sketch of my graph here. OK, and then we're done with this particular part of the worksheet.